Hello and welcome to the Embarcadero University course, Data Modeling with ERStudio. In this session, we'll discuss getting started with ERStudio Data Architect. We'll review some of the key functionality and provide an overview of the user interface. We'll show how to start a data model with, data, with ERStudio Data Architect. We'll discuss configuring and customizing uh, the settings for ERStudio data, Arch data Architect. We'll talk about some of the navigational aids that are provided for you. We'll show you how to set up the logical model display as well as the physical model display. Okay, let's start by going through the user interface of ERStudio Data Architect. On the left, I have the Data Model Explorer tree. I can use this to navigate the logical and physical data models in this DM1 file. Down below the Data Model Explorer tree, I have a series of tabs. We have the Data Dictionary tab, the Data Lineage tab, and the Macro tab. We'll go into more depth of each one of these in further sessions. In the Data Model tab, I can see the submodels below each model. If I expand one of the submodels, I'll see any nested submodels below that. And I can use these to get at those particular submodels uh, immediately and navigate to them. If I use this particular fit and window, it'll fit the current objects into the data model window on the right hand side. I can use also the tree to open up the properties for a given object. Up above we have a series of tabs for the entity. If I double click on an attribute here we have a the properties for the attribute and a series of tabs down here for other properties of the attribute. We also have some navigational aids for uh, use with uh, navigating large models. If I go to the view menu here we can take a look and go at the zoom window. We can go back here and take a look at the overview window. Now both of these provide different utilities so if we're zoomed out of a model you can see I can hover over the investment entity and get a view in that window that's a hundred percent view. In the contrast, if I zoom out and use this dynamic zoom, you'll see that I can still hover around that and see that quite easily. If I use the dynamic zoom and zoom in, then I can use the overview window to pan around that particular data model. So there's quite a bit of utilities here that can help you with large models. Okay, now let's focus on starting a new data model from scratch. What I can do is go up to File, New, and we're going to select this first option here to draw a new data model. We'll be going through the reverse engineer later on in a, in a different session. I'll hit OK and this will open a blank data model for me. Now what I can do is if I go, you'll start with a logical model and then I can use this object toolbar to add any objects to the data model that I want to. So I'll go into entity mode and drop a couple entities down here. Now you notice that by default it goes into on-screen editing mode. I can simply type a name here and then click off and it will commit that to the data model. If I'm in entity mode and I want to get out of it, I simply need to right click. If I want to enable that on-screen editing again, I can just hold shift and left click into the entity. And notice I can add a primary key, I can hit tab and hit type in another attribute here. So this allows me to add directly into the uh, screen and type the names that I want. 
Another way to add attributes here, and you'll remember in the previous model that we went through the data dictionary. And if we, we can go back there, and we'll see that we have some domains here that we can leverage. Now we'll get into more in depth with domains later on. But if I go back to this tab here, Model 2, what I can do is go to File, Import Data Dictionary, and browse to that GIM data model that I have. And what this will do is bring in all the domains for me here. Now what these allow me to do is if I want to simply add a group of these to a data model or an entity, I can just simply drag and drop. You'll notice here it'll use whatever the default attribute name or the default column name for the attributes here. Now as we get into further sessions, we'll talk about applying naming standards and leveraging these more in depth. But just note that domains are a nice way, as you're getting started with a data model, to add attributes very quickly. Okay, let's talk about configuring the settings for ERStudio Data Architect. Now there's two ways to set up Data Architect to do what you want to do in terms of object coloring, default layout, and relationship layout. You can change the current model and the default settings in that current model. You can change specific objects to override those defaults. And then you can set up the defaults for new models. For new models, if you go to the Tools, Options, you'll see a dialog here that will allow you to change a number of settings throughout the product. So if we go to the Application tab, here's where we'd set up default color schemes if we want to. We can set up a model order, and this is for the physical model. We can go to the logical model, and this would actually allow us to set up a default notation and background color and other settings. And then we'd have the same options here for the physical models. A lot of times people want to set up a default database platform or they can set up a, a different background color between the logical and physical so they can tell uh, when they're in one versus the other. So again, these settings here are for new models. Anytime I go to File, New, these settings will be used. If I want to change the current model, that's when I use either the format menu and use the color and fonts, layout relationships, edit color, uh, entity color and font settings, or I can use the view menu here. And if we go into the diagram object display, you'll see here in this case we're in the relationship tab, and we'd be able to set up the relationship style to be either elbow or straight. If we want them to be elbowed, we can keep them like this. I can hit OK. And what this will do is make any relationship that I add elbowed. If we go back there and set it to straight, then I can go here and add a relationship and I can just click once on the parent, once on the child, and you'll see that this is now straight. And you'll notice that when I did this, it didn't change the current relationship. It left that as is. And we do that on purpose because we know that uh, you spend a lot of time setting up the different settings and, and how the relationship lines are laid out, and we don't want to mess that up. If we wanted to change the relationships of all, or the, the layout of all the relationships, what I can do is go to Edit, Select Relationships of, of the same type, or select, op, excuse me, select objects of the same type. You'll notice it's selected that other relationship. And then what I can do is go up to the format menu and decide how I want to lay out that relationship. This is also available if we had actually just right clicked on that, that relationship as well. It would be the same exact thing. So what I can do here is set it up as elbowed and then it would actually make all the relationships elbowed or straight. If we want to set up the uh, change the colors and fonts, there's a number of ways to do that as well. 
So if we go to this particular set colors and fonts, what this is going to do is set up the defaults for this particular model. So if I go in and I say I want this, uh, maybe we want to go into the fonts and we want to set up uh, inherited primary keys and we want them to keep them red, but we want them to be uh, maybe italic. I can hit OK. And if we actually add a relationship here, you'll see that that's now italic. So anytime I set that up, that will be that setting will be preserved. If we want to override the model default, I can actually right click on entity two, for example, and go to entity color and fonts. And in this case, this will bring up an interface where I can actually set this particular entity. So if I want to set the name to be italic, I can just use this current text selection, set font, and then set that to be italic. And maybe we actually want that to be uh, bold italic. So you'll see that that will, that will be used. If we wanted to select a couple attributes here, then I can set the you know color for that example. If we want to set those to uh, a nice yellow here, we can do that. Not very readable, but you can still see that you can select multiple things here and set the, the color or the font accordingly. So, and you'll notice that these options here, when we co color attributes, the attributes will be colored like that in other submodels. Conversely, if we want to set up background colors and entity uh, colors, uh, we can actually make an entity a specific color in one particular submodel. And the reason for that is maybe you have a submodel that you want to convey the working status and all um, you know, draft objects are blue versus white. Well, you can do something like that, but they would be preserved in other submodels. But you'll notice if I go back to that interface, we have this apply to all submodels. So basically that just means that if we wanted to set that entity color or background or outline for all submodels, we can do that as well. Okay. The last thing we'll discuss in this session is how to set up the logical model display and physical model display. So let me go back to that GIM DB data model that we had originally opened up. I'll go to the model zoom here and go to fit to window. And you'll notice in this particular dis sub model, we're displaying the attribute names as well as the domains that are bound to each attribute. So if we zoom in, in in a little bit, and again I'll use the dynamic zoom and I'll just uh, hold the left mouse button down and drag down to zoom in and up to zoom out. So we'll zoom in a little bit just by dragging down a little bit. And you can see here that client first name, client last name, this is a short name, this is a medium name, and again these are just domains that are listed here that are bound to each column. Well, what I can do for this particular object here, if I go to the View menu and Diagram Object Display Options, then under the Entity menu here, I'll actually be able to pick and choose how I want this particular object to be displayed. And again, this is a submodel only setting. If I want to apply it to all submodels, I can just go to this Apply To and select any other submodels I would want to apply these particular settings to. In this case, we'll keep it selected just at that client submodel. We go back to the entity tab and just say I want alternate key, inversion, maybe we want the null option, and uh, the data type. So I'll hit OK. And now what you'll see, let me go back to fit this in the window, you'll see a lot more text here for each attribute and we can actually use uh, one of our layouts here. If I just go to hierarchical, and uh, it'll space everything out for me. And, uh, and then we'd be able to see those settings here. You'd see anywhere that you have 
a alternate key or unique key or uh, inversion entry. Uh, you'll see the null, not null, and be able to pick and choose. So again, we just set this up for this particular submodel. If I go down to uh, through the data model and we go down to the physical model, you can see here we've actually already have a lot of those uh, settings uh, set up. Uh, and in this case, you'll notice that we have the uh, column names, so the technical names, the domains, the data type, null option. Another interesting display option that you have here is actually to display both the business name and the technical name, so the column name, uh, that might be restricted for a particular DBMS. And you'll see here we have investment that's lowercase and then uppercase. In this case, this would be the table name, and this would be the entity name. And if I go back to the view menu and our display options, I can actually show uh, to display the attribute names as well. And we'll hit OK. So in this case, you'll see if I just move this over a little bit and then scroll over, we'll actually see next to each column the actual attribute name that's there. And this is great if you have some really uh, restricted or convoluted naming standards that uh, where the, the column names don't make a lot of sense to the naked eye. Uh, if you have business names associated with each column, those can be displayed as well. So that concludes this first session on getting started with Data Architect. Again, we went through some key functionality, the overview uh, of the interface, uh, starting a data model from scratch, uh, configure, uh, configuring and customizing, uh, navigating, and then setting up the display. So please uh, go back to the uh, syllabus and we'll discuss uh, and there'll be other sessions that you can take a look at.